Pong, what was the first video game? Like Pong, Ping Pong, whatever. You know how Pong yeah. is, right? Yeah, Pong. And you know how, how that was played? It was like a yeah, ball. Yeah, two paddles like... on either side. And exactly. The ball. Yeah, I play, also played, I, I only know what that is because it was like a mini game in a game that came out in like the 90s called Commander Keen for okay. DOS, I think it was, uh, Windows computers. And this in this game, Commando King came in after. There, there was like a, that game. Yeah, was that was the very first video game was Pong. Okay. And then Commander Keen was that had, a little had a mini game, a secret that you could play Pong. Okay. And then my brother had to explain to me, yeah, this is Pong. That's okay. why this is cool. I mean, I always thought it was cool because there was a secret game within the game, Ooh. and this was like unbelievable. Ooh. This is <laughs> sounds awesome. a lot like life. Yeah, yeah, and it's also like this is this is the coolest theory. secret ever. <laughs> I get Hell to play yeah. a whole other thing. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's, I think in the main menu, you could, like, press some button that lets you play Pong. So that's, yeah, sorry I interrupted. No, that's, that's awesome. That's how I know what it is. Hell yeah, so you know what it looks like. Yes. So now, it basically, just in the span of time of how long, imagine, now we have 3D. Now we have virtual. Now we have all these amazing video games. Just in this time, what has it been, 30 years? or whatever you want to say, 40 years. Imagine 100 years from now, 1,000 years from now, they're going to have games that are indistinguishable from reality. Like, if you take that that rate... Oh, that, for sure. We're, like, much sooner. So the question <laughs> like is that... 10 years from now, maybe. Yeah. We'll have, you mean graphics-wise? In every way. But then he goes on to say... We haven't been able to integrate consciousness with the game, really, at all. Yes. We, we've been able to do virtual reality, and so maybe if you, you're saying make it so you don't know that you're wearing the headset so basically or, it's, I don't know you can't you can't substitute the, the feelings that you have in the game onto all the things that aren't so here so like here's we haven't integrated to, te- consciousness with yep. technology yet yeah so here's what I'm, what I'm trying to get at which is um what if they can make what if they can make a game that becomes indistinguishable from reality where they can literally program a game where you don't even know that you're in the game but you feel as if you're in the game and everything is real and it's programmed within you to feel like things there's going to be amazing amazing different things you could do a thousand years from now a hundred thousand years from now and the question is are, are we have we simul- if we agree with that logic that it just gets better the rate of how good it will get with just with 30 years is that a hundred years, a thousand years. God knows what's going to happen. It just keeps building, building, building. But, right, so, but it's, it's mm-hmm. the difference between a computer technology versus artificial intelligence. And, like, we can always make an imitation of something else, but how will we know, like... There you go. It's Evolving technology isn't necessarily that understanding. Like, that bridge is just a completely different... Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry. I don't even know. No, I'm listening to you. I'm, I don't have the words. Completely different uh, bridge to cross. Like, we're, we're looking at that as how much of our progression in technology will lead to a breakthrough in that. I don't know. Like, it could, that could be something that we just don't ever figure out. How to, like, create artificial intelligence. It might not be a thing and always just be machines and when will that you know when will it be smart enough to know that it exists as a as a thing and do its own free will because it, and not because it's like just going haywire on mount like code that's uh-huh. broken and then will just crash like it's actually a conscious mm-hmm. individual i don't know if we can do that as humans or if, like, I, I'm not, I don't lean towards Bacano, we can't. Mm-hmm. But I don't feel like that's a technological evolution. It's more of a, a philosophical thing. Like, does it even exist? It might not exist. It might just be like Einstein's theory rel- of theory of relativity. <laughs> I think it is that you can't go as fast as light, according to physics, because the closer you get to the speed of light. <coughs> oh, sorry, excuse me. Yeah. Bad, the faster you go, the slower you go, which is Excuse in time. So the faster you get to the speed of light, the slower you'll go. So you can't ever approach the speed of light. Is the point? That's the point of this theory. Yeah, because as you approach the speed of light, time would go infinitely slower. 
as you went infinitely faster, mm -hmm. right? Those, they're proportional. So you can't approach the speed of light, right? Mm -hmm. Which kind of like makes it feel like you're never moving at all because the faster you go in space, the slower you go in time, right? And that increases as you, whatever. Anyway, so, and everything in the universe, I was thinking about this, sorry. <laughs> and this is gonna be a, the universe, it's Big Bang and it started expanding, right? Uh -huh. So, you're with me, you've learned about this. Yes. Okay. And we know that the universe is expanding. That was cool. We discovered that. It's like a fundamental force of the universe that we've, you know, calculated out. I think it's because of the, I don't know, I don't know, some kind of radiation that tells us the things used to be closer together instead of farther apart, whatever. So, we know that that is happening, that we're expanding and not just staying still. And then we figured that everything as it's expanding outwards, it loses heat, slows down. And so that speed, when you throw something, it's first it's going fast and then it slows down and stops. So we figured that our speed would be slowing down and then it was gonna stop. But actually it's increasing. Our speed is, we're, everything is expanding and it's expanding faster and faster instead of expanding and slowing down. So if we keep increasing in speed, eventually, like all the matter in the universe keeps expanding outwards, it's the Big Bang, and going faster and faster. So if that's also a law, because as far as we know, it's always been doing that. Uh -huh. So that's a fundamental law of physics, is that everything in the universe is expanding outwards, yep. faster and faster, as far as we know. And that just keeps going. Eventually, we'll reach the speed of light. But then you can't reach the speed of light, because as the closer you move to the speed of light, the slower you go, so you would just stay infinitely right there. And there's that weird moment where physics kind of breaks down, so you can't, you can't really go further. We're gonna reach that eventually, if everything is moving faster and faster. We have to, unless everything sl starts slowing down. And then what happens? We have no proof, exactly. I have to ask this to a physicist, because I don't understand if there's, like, if there's a field that studies this. I don't even know where to look to ask that but it seems like almost, it's a scientific question, but it's also philosophical, mm -hmm. I, I guess. Cause like that's, I, don't, I guess it doesn't really matter if Einstein's theory doesn't, like, that's, it's a question I don't understand according to the model of physics that we have. Is, you can, the universe is going to reach that speed and then we're gonna reach a point where time should slow down or stop or I don't really understand because the closer we get that's how slow how much slower time goes and that's why you can never approach the speed of light but what will that even be something that we experience like or is that just going to be nothing to, like I don't know I don't understand what's supposed to happen there what if people are if you were hypothetically at that point where you're reaching closer and closer to the speed of light what happens because we're going faster and faster you're saying yeah, have we already so reached that speed, or is there a way to measure the speed at which we're expanding? Because mm -hmm. when that speed, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Isn't that, a, sorry, this tangent I thought was interesting. It is interesting. You were telling me about something. Um, simulation theory. Yes. But, um, so, I'm not sure where we left off, but... Um, basically, what I was trying to say is that if you if you're seeing the rate of expansion from Pong to what we have now in this oh. short span of time, Westworld. Have you seen it? Um, Westworld. Yeah. Um, I heard of it. It's kind of what you're saying now. The more realistic the graphics will get, how we be able to distinguish from reality. But not necessarily that. They're saying that there's going to be so many, and oh, and they're going to make it. Oh. And another so, point is so that the they're kids gonna, can have that running like as a project. Like it's gonna be, they're gonna make an infinite number of those. Exactly, and it keeps going on. So the question is, there's a lot more to it, but the question is, is that are we in? Are we making the simulation now, yeah. or are we already a simulated universe? What are the odds? And they say that the odds are a lot more likely that we are just one of the simulated universes. Well, why? It's like a false, yeah, it. not each of those is, are equally likely. 
is the question I exactly. always have about that one. It's yeah. not just as likely that we were, it's not like a one-to-one like you're. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think it's, we're assuming that's even possible. And then that those odds are, but then, but you have to assume, is it possible? And then if it's possible, it's just like two, two sets. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know if you can compare those. Compare which two? Like if I was Elon Musk, mm -hmm. right? I would think we're in a simulation, yeah. If you were him, you yeah. would think you're in a yeah, simulation. Yeah, I would think we're in a simulation okay. because I have all this money and I figured all, out everything and I'm going to space in rockets. Like, this is a fucking, this is, a, what are the odds that I would be Elon Musk you know, out of all of these people, you know, and, and literally the person leading people into space and next to the government and like getting into beef with people on Twitter and, and just all this, of course, this is like, it would seem much more likely than if you're just a guy, like Neo in the Matrix was, like just a guy working in, the, in an office. You know, it's so much more like, like most people, more people, much more people, many more people, sorry, what would feel like the world is a lot more real than Elon Musk. And that the odds that they would be them isn't as crazy as it, it's just, it puzzles me that he doesn't think about that. Because I know he thinks that we're in the simulation. Right? And. I feel like he would calculate that into his, you know, I don't know, like he might, I guess, because you can never know, I think we talked about this last time, you can never know if you're conscious the way that I'm conscious, mm -hmm. you know, so he doesn't, I don't know, sorry. No, I'm listening, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I keep Try. losing my train of thought to this, oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hear that, man. But yeah, it's just, uh, it's